Recently, one of my daughters and I drove from Baja, California, Sur, Mexico to British Columbia, Canada with some rescue dogs. We dropped most of the dogs at new homes along the way. With those remaining, we visited the Capilano Bridge, a wood and steel cable suspension bridge 450 feet long, draped 230 feet above the Capilano River. The surrounding area has been made into a sort of First Nations exhibit slash environmental classroom slash amusement park. It's also been a laboratory for arousal. In 1974, the birth year of People magazine, Happy Days, Leonardo DiCaprio, and the World Trade Center, Canadian researchers Arthur Aaron and Don Dutton conducted an experiment using this fear-inducing bridge and another not-scary-at-all bridge upriver. They were looking to show whether or not the high anxiety of maybe falling to your death would elicit more sexual attraction than when feeling secure and stable without doom. To do this, Aaron and Dutton asked a so-called attractive female to stand midway on the Capilano Bridge and recruit men, ages 18 to 35, unaccompanied by a partner, to participate in a study about scenic attractions and creativity. If they agreed, the woman would then ask the man to answer a few questions and write a description of a photograph like this one, with a woman holding one hand over her face and the other reaching out, while on the bridge, beside her, swaying precariously. The dogs were very uncertain at the beginning. My daughter and I each had to carry one of them some of the way there. Look at this cutie absolutely not having it. After the participants, the men, finished their photo descriptions, the attractive woman would write her name and phone number on the corner of the paper and tear it off all flirty-like, inviting them to call her if they wanted to talk more. For comparison's sake, Aaron and Dutton asked the same attractive female to recruit participants on a stable bridge nearby, where nothing wobbled or bounced and the men would feel totally secure. Aaron and Dutton also ran the experiment with a male recruiter rather than the attractive female, both on the shaky Capilano Bridge and Safe Control Bridge. So you have attractive woman, scary bridge, attractive woman on non-scary bridge, male recruiter on scary bridge, and male recruiter on non-scary bridge. Participants recruited by the woman on this bridge wrote stories of a significantly more sexual nature than those with the woman on the stable bridge or those with the male recruiter on either bridge. They used words like intercourse, kiss, lover, and girlfriend. They were also significantly more likely to call the female recruiter after the study to talk about science. 39% called the attractive female on the Capilano bridge and fewer than 1% called the attractive female on the solid bridge, the male recruiter on the Capilano bridge, or the male recruiter on the stable bridge. Bridge. I am very aware of the shortcomings of the methodology, so are the researchers, but there are actually multiple studies that legitimize the findings. James 1910, Sutty 1935, Ellis 1936, Clark 1952, Tinbergen 1954, Hyder 1958, Barclay and Haber 1965, Ross 1974, and a study called Love at First Fright by Meston and Frolic 2004, in which a roller coaster replaced the Capilano Bridge and got similar results. The social psychologists Stanley Satcher and Jerome Singer named it the two-factor theory of emotion. Essentially, our emotions are based on a physiological response and a cognitive label. Factor one, the physiological response like heavier breathing, pounding heart, and sweaty palms are present when we experience fear, anger, pain, hate, love, and lust, but we don't know what emotion it is without the second factor. The brain uses context, environmental cues that help quickly interpret and label which of the emotions it is. But Aaron and Dutton's study shows that sometimes our mind misinterprets what we're feeling and misleads us, what they call the misattribution of arousal theory. How we get titillated bridge crossers. They think they're aroused sexually when actually their heightened emotion is trepidation. In other research studies, participants have been yelled at and electrically shocked only to think that they're turned on and horny. After we finished crossing the shaky suspension bridge over Capilano River, one of the dogs took a shit and started immediately humping the other one, something that she hadn't done before, but all that adrenaline. Adrenaline is the first hormone to be secreted when a dog is stressed. It's also what humans are flooded with when we're afraid, hurt, or excited, causing us to feel like all of our bodily systems are on alert. What you perceive as the cause determines what emotion you think it is. In 1914, Alison Brooks demonstrated that you can use your mind and the cognitive labeling to turn anxious or fearful emotions into positive, enjoyable ones. 
Just by saying, I feel calm or I feel excited, participants in her study were able to influence how their minds interpreted their physiology and actually act with confidence where they otherwise would have felt dread. I'm guessing some of you will add risk-taking to your next date or affirmations, hoping it will increase interest. Others of you will recognize this research means you might not actually be into someone and take a little bit more time to read the context correctly. Either way, stay curious.